And when we come back, Ghost with Patrick Swayze communicating with Demi Moore from Beyond the Grave. Molly. Our next movie is named Ghost, and the ghost in the title belongs to Patrick Swayze, an investment executive who has just moved into a new apartment with his girlfriend, Demi Moore, when he is killed one night by a mugger. His ghost stays on the scene, however, and discovers that he wasn't a victim of random violence. He was murdered. The ghost uses a psychic played by Whoopi Goldberg in an attempt to communicate this idea to Demi Moore, but at first, Moore remains completely unconvinced. Swayze grows alarmed when Moore disregards his warning, so he keeps tabs on her, and here he eavesdrops on her conversation with another investment executive, played by Tony Goldwyn. How could you believe some fortune teller from Brooklyn who just shows up at your door? I sat there and watched her have a conversation with him. Oh, bye, Mom. Well, the ironic thing is that Whoopi Goldberg has always thought she was a fake psychic, and now that she's real, she can't get anyone to believe her. Why did he come back? I don't know. Why is he still here? He's stuck, that's what it is. He's in between worlds. You know, it happens sometimes that the spirit gets yanked out so quick that the essence still feels like it has work to do here. Would you stop rambling? I don't think I'm rambling. I'm just answering a question. He's got an attitude now. I don't have an attitude. Yes, you do have an attitude. We have a little discussion. There are a lot of things I like in Ghost. Among them, the movie's mixture of humor and the supernatural. And I also like the whole gimmick of Swayze using Goldberg to communicate with his lover, Demi Moore. What I didn't like was that the movie could have been so much brighter and smarter than it is. Demi Moore is so reluctant to believe that her late boyfriend is really talking to her through Goldberg that after a while it actually gets annoying. I mean, how much proof does she need? Goldberg is able to look through the door and say, that's the t-shirt that you were wearing when your husband spilled a margarita on it, and she still doesn't know this is really on the level. The ending of the movie is a combination of traditional Hollywood violence and traditional Hollywood courtiness. I kept waiting for a big emotional release, and everything was predictable. Still, it's a clever and inventive effort. I liked it, but I didn't like it enough to recommend it. I do uh, like it enough to recommend it. There are some flaws in this picture. I think, that, however, you're really incorrect at the point at which the through-the-door t-shirt sequence, that's late in the film, mm -hmm. and at that point, I believe that she does believe as much as you could possibly well, believe. At that point, she should absolutely believe believe, Gene, why are we still playing this game? It's because, Roger, if I were to play some of those tricks on, on you, there would be part of you as even as a reporter, as a skeptic, you say, what the hell is going on here? You do not believe that someone next to you, can t who's left you, is, is talking to you. You just don't buy that. So that's healthy skepticism. Beyond that, I think the film is romantic. And that's, I think, the thing that you didn't focus on. I had one problem with a scene where Swayze realizes that if he ever wants to touch to me more again, he's going to have to do it through Whoopi Goldberg's body. Right. And he occupies her body, and then Goldberg reaches out and takes to me Moore's hand. And, right. this is, and then they cut so that we can see that it's Patrick Swayze holding her. I thought it would have been ever so much more poignant if it had been the two women. In other words, oh. why should we be able to see it's Patrick Swayze? Where are the rules here as to who is I, seen as what? I agree with you. Again, that occurs, then now, now you're talking about almost the very end yeah. of the picture. Uh -huh. and. Uh, I think that's a mistake, a legitimate mistake, but I don't think that you've given the full richness of this, but you said there are lots of things you like. I think that the picture is pretty rich. Uh, I had a problem at first with uh, Whoopi Goldberg seemed like so, so contemporary in this fanciful story, and then she got good after a while in the picture. She hasn't been good in a movie in a long time. You always like any movie that has to do with love that comes back from beyond the grave. There's never been a single movie like that that you've disliked. You, me, you think that me I alone? Think me alone? And how about the rest of the right. world? It's kind of a soft spot with you. I think for me and yeah. I think most uh -huh. of the world, which is probably why they keep making them. Okay, well then this is a movie for the rest of the world. Coming up next, the controversial bad mouth comedian Andrew Dice Clay stars in his first feature film, playing a rock and roll detective in the adventures of Ford Fairlane. What is it they call you? Mr. Rock and Roll Detective? Please save it. <laughs> 